What's up, y'all? Got a family to feed, so let's get into this tea. Y'all know uh, my lawyer break down, Miss Mel Goosby, aka I'm not a lawyer, but it's going to break down this DJ academics and shawty situation. Let's get it. I'm not a lawyer, but Rolling Stone reported on a recently filed lawsuit against DJ academics, so I went and got the full lawsuit to give you a recap. Trigger warning, this gets graphic. So the lawsuit was filed by a woman whose name I'm probably going to mess up, but I believe she goes by Zia. Sorry if that's wrong. According to the lawsuit, academics and Zia met online in 2021. They dated casually and she would visit him occasionally at his house in New Jersey. After not having spoken to each other in about a year, AK invites Zia over to his house on July 16th, 2022. The lawsuit alleges that before Zia arrived to AK's house, he informed two of his friends, who are also co-defendants in this case, that Dang. she was on different type of vibes. And then the lawsuit references a social media post where AK said, quote, both maybe my friends took it the wrong way because I remember she told me she was like, yo, the girl you used to know, like I'm on some bad girl vibes now. Basically, she was doing her thing. So Zia says she arrives to the house and one of AK's friends, John Doe number one, greets her at the door. She didn't expect anybody else was gonna be at the house, just her and AK, but she went in anyway since she didn't suspect anything suspicious. Lawsuit says Zia goes into the kitchen and there's another man, John Doe number two, that's already in the kitchen. It's worth noting that there apparently was a neighborhood power outage when she arrived. So the three of them are just sitting in the kitchen talking. The men start offering her a drink and at first she declines because she says she usually makes her own drinks when she's at AK's house. But eventually because of their insistence, she lets them make her a drink. At this point, the lawsuit says Zia starts asking where academics is. One of the men goes to look for him and then comes back to say that he was gonna be coming soon. The lawsuit says that Zia didn't go look for academics herself because again, the power was out and the house was completely dark and she trusted that this other guy had went and looked for him. At some point, the power turns back on and John Doe number one asks Zia if she wants to get into the hot tub. She agrees and notes that based on the men's actions and gestures, it seemed like they were going to be leaving soon. So her expectation was that she was gonna get in the hot tub and continue to wait for academics. After she got into the hot tub by herself, the lawsuit says that John Doe number one also gets in the hot tub while John Doe number two, her to take shots and also hazing around the hot tub. So eventually the lawsuit says that Zia begins feeling weird, lightheaded, dizzy, and like her body was on fire. John Doe number two allegedly gets more alcohol for her and forcibly pours it into her mouth. Zia mm. says that she was disoriented, had trouble breathing, and struggled to get out of the pool for fear that she could drown. Once she's mm. out of the hot tub, the lawsuit says that she is attacked by John Doe number one as she laid on the concrete by the pool. John Doe. Don't get me wrong. I've done a lot of dumb stuff, you know? But like, I've been in the presence of men, especially men of power per se. And when I say power, let me explain. Um, men that might have a bag or men that um, are in control of the section at the moment, in control of the bottle at the moment. High value men. Thank you, Chrissy. Um, and they have things that I guess you would want per se, right? So I will say being in around that, they are very persuasive and are very um, forceful. I, I always recall this guy I was at a party with, not with him, I was at a party for someone, um, but the guy had a bottle, right? And I'm filming. And um, he had a bottle and I was like, I don't know if I said, let me hit the bottle. Or he was like, you want to hit the bottle? And I think that I was kind of like, nah, because I, I, I'm not the one to be like, let me hit your bottle. That's not me. I'm not broke. I don't have to um, type shit. But he was like basically insinuating that I hit the bottle. And it was so persuasive to the point where he's like, man, come on, you know? And I hit the bottle anyway. And after that happened, I knew that I would never do that again. And I knew what that felt like because I'm never in the presence of a, a man ever. Like, 
I don't deal with men. I don't kick it with men unless you my guy, like one of my friends, right? We don't have those issues. But in that situation, that was an issue. And after I hit that bottle, um, it was poured like a, a Megan Thee Stallion situation. After I hit the bottle, I knew like, oh, because I... I'm a hypochondriac, so I can make myself think it's something that is not, you know. So I hit the bottle and I, I felt like, oh, my God, why would I do that? Anything could have been in this bottle. He brought the bottle in, by the way. <laughs> he didn't buy it there. It was one of those parties that it was kind of like a BYOB. But I was working, so I had no intentions on drinking. But anyway, I was so like, I felt so like I would never do this again. So I understand now how women can feel persuaded or feel like they were forcefully, um, like they were forced to do something. And this was years ago. So, you know, it'll never happen again. I don't need your bottle. I don't want your bottle. I'm absolutely not coming to a space where I feel like I'm not safe. Um, and in that space, I didn't feel like I wasn't safe. It was just more so like, that was too fast, too forceful, too persuasive. Never do it again. Um, but I knew I would never be in that situation again. So now I don't ever want to be at a party with a bunch of men. And it's a party where it's a BYOB. And you know what I'm saying? You learn your lesson. So I don't know if this was her first time or whatever the case may be. But I hate that she drunk that bottle but i do understand why that happened like that so number two allegedly then comes over and joins in on the attack zia says that she was in and out of consciousness and doesn't remember coming into the house but she was woken up around 4 a.m in what she believes was ak's bedroom where he then also attacked her relentlessly according to this lawsuit it's actually pretty graphic so, so i'm not going to go into the details of all of this the next morning when zia wakes up the lawsuit says that academics asked her if she knew what happened to which she replied no and then he showed her a small trash can that had vomit and some wrappers in it based on the two wrappers zia says she was able to begin piecing together what happened According to the lawsuit, AK then showed Zia surveillance footage from one of the attacks in which, according to her, she appeared to be laying lifeless. Zia says AK then told her that his mom was on the way, so he got her a lift to go home. The lawsuit says that Zia later learned from police that AK disposed of several items, including bedsheets, at the dumpster near his office, quote, presumably attempting to destroy the evidence of what happened. So Zia's in the lift on her way home and she reaches back out to AK to continue the conversation about what happened. And the lawsuit says that AK sent her a screenshot of the attack when Zia was laid out on the concrete in front of the pool with John Doe number one and John Doe number two. Zia says she repeatedly asked for the rest of the footage, but academics refused to send it to her. But he did suggest that she go get tested, as would he as well, which she contends is proof that he also participated in the attack. So Zia gets a kit done. Photos of her bruises and scars are taken, and police asked her to participate in a recorded wire call with academics. The lawsuit says that on that recorded call, AK graphically recounted and admitted to engaging with Zia. One of the image that academics allegedly sent to Zia is included in this lawsuit and ciao trigger warning photos of her bruises and a screenshot of a text exchange between her and academics is also in yo what the fuck i'm gonna get tested this week thank you should too to make sure you're good yes i'm going now i'm hurt really bad it's unlike me to do this i don't even know the other guy's name so i was just laying there you called i was passed out for most of it but I'd wake up now and then also I was in shock. I got most of the information from you before then. I never met the other guy. So he just took the opportunity, I guess. That's why I told you I don't judge. Just trying to make sure you made the choice to do whatever you wanted to do. Always with you, but not this time around. I blacked out. I remember you waking me up during the night. They said you were trying to call in, bring your friend to join in included on to reference a december 30th social media post that academics made where he mentions his house being raided because of a sa claim 
that was done by other people, not him. In that post, academics, according to Zia, defamed her by claiming that she voluntarily engaged with multiple people that evening, despite knowing that that was false based on the text exchange that he already had with Zia, where she stated that she had no idea what happened and he was the one who actually informed her of what took place that night. Zia then says that academics defamed her again the following day in another post in which he says, quote, if everything or anything you're saying is true, he, meaning academics, would have been charged, but nothing happened. No case, no nothing. Zia says that since her story has come out, several other women have come forward with similar stories about academics befriending them, grooming mm. them, inviting them to his house, getting them intoxicated, and then assaulting them. Several other women have come forward and said that academics contacted them. You know what? Just like, behooves me about these rich niggas is like why do you feel like you gotta give women inebriated because this is beyond intoxicated like inebriated and then just basically out of her right mind to get some coochie like I why like if you got the money you got the fame. You got all this other shit, right? You at the house. She was interested. She already did it to you before, you know? Why the hell would you jump in on that? And then he, when he was explaining this, he kept calling them dudes his homies. Like, them not your homies. If they doing these things in your house. Or maybe they are, because clearly you jumped in. Like, wow. <laughs> I am they disgusted. Minors <laughs> forged a fake friendship, groomed them until they were 18, and then attempted to sleep with them. The lawsuit says, upon information and belief, Mr. Allen, meaning the academics, foolishly attributes his lack of arrest or prosecution as some indication that he and his friends are clear, but nothing can be further from the truth. And so she is suing for negative infliction of emotional distress, defamation, essay, and negligence. Now, a few things to say before I go. Zia's attorney is Tyrone Blackburn, and Tyrone Blackburn is the attorney that represents Rodney Jones in one of the Diddy lawsuits. And Tyrone also represents the woman suing Nicki Minaj's husband for essay. Second thing. Yes, this is a civil lawsuit and civil lawsuits are for money. Prosecutors file criminal charges and put people in jail. People file civil lawsuits and get money. So if mm. AK were to be charged criminally in this instance, that would be completely up to a prosecutor. She can't make them charge him with a crime. And lastly, if you mm. for some reason care to read this very graphic lawsuit, Hit the link in my bio to join my Patreon. I have a tier specifically for people who just want to get access to Doc. And I'm already on her Patreon. I give her her six dollars every month. So I will be reacting to that on my Patreon. Only on my Patreon. I'm not bringing it to YouTube. Um, and I don't want to go against her either. So if you see this, that's not what I'm trying to do. But I never react to whatever she has on Patreon for my Patreon ever. But it's just more so like this academics thing. I'm interested <laughs> because like, what are you doing? What are you doing? So this is no disrespect to her at all. Um, I just want to see the graphic part of it. Like I want to see what actually happen ox and lawsuits and stuff like that and if you don't want to join my patreon you don't have to i'm sure this lawsuit is somewhere on twitter so go google it or we can just find it on twitter so i don't go against her i'm confident that justice will prevail and the veil will be removed so no other woman will have to endure what i did the comment for me litigation is always the last resort after several unsuccessful attempts to privately resolve this Miss Abashe was left with no choice other than to file Mr. Allen Hubris will be his downfall. Damn, his number up there and everything. Uh, I love her. She's she's a great she break it down because lawfully I don't be knowing none of that shit. Um, I don't even know where to find the lawsuits and all that. I'm gonna figure it out though. <laughs> um y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below it doesn't seem like my boy is innocent at all at all so yeah that's where we at let me know what y'all thinking love y'all appreciate y'all hey yeah